We've reached the final week of Lent. We are preparing our journey with Jesus and his disciples into Jerusalem as we come today to Palm Sunday and our sixth week of our series, Choices. I'm Pastor Melissa Rudolph, and I welcome you to NCCP Anywhere to make this holy journey with us. But first, would you start with me in prayer? Holy and gracious God, open our ears and our minds and our hearts to the word you have for each and every one of us this day. And as I, your servant, stand before you, I pray that I would decrease, that you would increase. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing to you, O God, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Not too long ago, we talked about Psalm 121. That was in our series last month. And we talked about how the people would look to the hills. And as they made a pilgrimage to Jerusalem for holy festivals, they would say, I lift my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Today, we see ourselves among the crowd looking toward the hill that's outside of Jerusalem. Coming down from that mountain, along this roadway, from the Mount of Olives, is Jesus. And he's riding, of all things, a donkey. It's interesting when you think about that image. We have here in our gospel lesson that as Jesus was approaching that mountain, he sent a couple of disciples ahead and said, go into the village over there. And as soon as you enter it, you'll find a, do a donkey tied up and a colt with it. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anybody says anything to you, say that the Lord needs it. So Jesus sent them off right away. And it happened to fulfill what the prophet had said. Say to daughter Zion, look, your king is coming to you humble and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the donkey's offspring. So the disciples, they went and they did just what Jesus told them to do. And all of the crowd that was there that day, they began to welcome Jesus the way they would have welcomed a king. It wasn't always typical for a king to ride on a donkey, although during times of peace, sometimes they would. King Solomon was known to do that. And then we're told in Zechariah and other prophetic books about this king that would be the king of Zion who would come on a donkey, like this prophecy right here that I just read. But imagine perhaps on the other side of the city, Borg and other theologians have have thought about what it might have been a different type of procession of all the Roman forces as Pilate and other leaders would enter with their horses and their chariots. But this scene is over on the part of the city that leads toward the temple. We have Jesus on the Mount of Olives. And as he's coming down that mountain, the crowds are starting to come out and they're laying their clothes on the road. They're taking palm branches and waving them, putting them down on the ground so that they could welcome this king. There was always a sort of misunderstanding about who Jesus was. People would ask, who is this man who's able to perform these miracles? We remembered in this series that the woman at the well asked, could this be the Messiah? And there were other misunderstandings. Even here, as people are shouting, Hosanna to the son of David, blessings to the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. As the whole city is starting to get stirred up, they're saying, who is this? And the crowds are saying, it's the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. So who is Jesus? Is he the Messiah? the one they've been waiting for, or is he just another prophet? As we hear this question, it causes us to consider, even for our own lives, just who this Jesus is. I remember that when I felt my call to ministry, when I was a graduate student, 
in, at American University. I was just drinking a cup of coffee one day and a young woman handed me a piece of candy and a tract about Islam. And as I was reading over the materials, it got to a piece where it talked about Jesus as a prophet. And I remember the moment when I said, no, Jesus isn't a prophet. Jesus is Lord. That's when I felt the Holy Spirit take me down the hill to go to the seminary where I realized that I was called to preach. There's something holy about when we can make a profession of faith, when we can say that, no, Jesus isn't just a prophet. Jesus is Lord. And when the people were expecting that this Jesus was going to be a king, he was going to be the king of the Jews, they had in their minds a, a victor. They had someone who was going to help them to lead against Roman oppression and to be able to release them from captivity. They pictured in their minds what a warlike king would be. But here, Jesus is coming into this city in peace and he's not simply a king. He is the Lord. He is the Messiah. People had all of these expectations for the ways that he would come and save them. They didn't want to necessarily pay Roman taxes. They didn't want to be subject to the Roman government. But what they found later that week was a man who was going to stand trial, a man who was going to go before Pilate and other religious authorities and to be asked to account for who he was and in many regards would say nothing, a man who's going to be, by week's end, hanging upon a cross. Now, as you're picturing the scene in Jerusalem, remember, the cross was a common sight they had them all over outside of the city so that people could see the warning of what it was to go against the government rule. Think about how many billboards we have up and down our highways. Crosses would be just as ubiquitous. In fact, Jesus wasn't even going to be the only one hanging there. In his particular part of the place of the skull, there are going to be two other criminals, common criminals hanging alongside him. So there's this scene again where all the expectations of the people are being thwarted. As they're given the opportunity in the middle of the week to ask and release one of the prisoners before the festival, there's going to be this question before them. Do we release Barabbas or do we release Jesus, the one from Nazareth, the one called King of the Jews? So here on this Palm Sunday, the crowds have been shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. They've been welcoming their Lord into the city. But these are the same voices that are going to shout, crucify him, crucify him. It's the choice that they made. And when we're thinking all series long about the choices that we make and the way we follow Christ, that's the one that's before us as well. Are we those who are going to shout Hosanna, who are going to praise our Lord at all times or are we the ones who, in the moments where we have disappointment, where we feel like Jesus hasn't lived up to our expectations, are we also going to turn around and shout, crucify him? So often in life, we're expecting Jesus to be a magical solution to all of our problems. But instead, he brings a very different perspective to us. He is someone who not only rules here and now, but into eternity. And as we've said throughout this series, the one who has that long scope of all of time within his mind and who knows each and every one of us intimately. But who do we ask Jesus to be? Are we willing to come along with him on this journey? 
to be those who continue to cling to our Lord, even as we see his suffering? Are we those who in our hardest and darkest moments are still going to be able to proclaim his, him as our Savior and Lord? Or are we still just expecting him to come and rescue us? Because we too are called to take this journey, to die a bit to ourselves and to live as disciples of Jesus Christ. It's the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. It's the prophet who we hear proclaim all of God's reign. But even more than that, he is our Messiah. He is our Lord. Either we follow him or we don't. Either we shout Hosanna or we shout crucify. Either we go with the crowd or we stay with his closest disciples who were willing to stand at the foot of the cross and watch him breathe his last. As you come into this week, I pray that you wrestle with who Jesus is to you. This is a week where we really reflect on all that God has done for us. So often we want to go from raising those palm branches and shouting Hosanna to the joy and the triumph of the resurrection. But this is a slower week. This is one where we're, we are called to deeper prayer, to think on Thursday about this Lord who washed his disciples' feet and who shared a meal with them. And then on this Friday, to consider those moments where he carried the sin of the world to that cross. And we sing and ask the question, were you there when they crucified my Lord? Do you feel that silence on Saturday when Jesus is in the tomb and the disciples at that point don't even know what's going to happen? This is the week when we give God glory and thanks for every one of the lashes that he would receive upon his body, every piercing of a thorn and a crown upon his head, every nail that was driven into his wrists and his feet, every single pain that he carried. We journey with him through that. Then when we return next week, when we experience the glory of the resurrection, it takes on even more meaning. We're told throughout scripture to choose who you will serve. And I pray that for you and your household, you will choose the Lord and that you can follow with us all this week long to be able to experience the depth of Christ's love for you and for me. And to know that we choose to shout, Hosanna, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And it's in his name that we pray all of our days. Amen.